Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a free versus free on Pain's Retribution. Playing on the other side as the Timonids, we've got Kaiku, we've got Necrotechnica, and we've got Vrax. Playing on the other side as the Imperial Fists, we've got Aerie 7889, we've got Waffle Stomper 55 playing as the Demon Hunters, and we have got Kubini playing as the Salamanders. It's Imperium versus Timonids, another faction war, so it's back to back this weekend so far, much like a bus when you wait for one for quite a while, and then two come at the same time. I do really appreciate the players, one, for playing the games, and two, for sending them in. I mean, obviously, without the games, there's no cast. Without the cast, there's no YouTube channel. And, you know, very reliant on these boys uh, playing all the various games and sending them in. If you guys at home haven't sent in a game before, but really fancy sending a game in, and you've played one, and you thought, oh, this is quite good, I, want, I might want to see on the channel, have a look at the Discord in the description below and send them in. And, you know, if, if they're good, we'll, we'll give them a cast. And look at that, you, you, you can send your mother a link and say, look, mum, I'm famous, I'm on the channel, I've made it in life, and <laughs> all that stuff. Anyway, so we saw Terminids vs. Death Core Creed yesterday, and if you haven't seen that game, pause the video, go watch it now, because I'm going to put some spoilers in there. So if you've not done that already, then, you you know, hold your peace, and, and that's that's your own fault now. But yeah, so Terminids won the previous game, and they won basically by getting to the late game, getting the big bad units up, and smashing their way through the Death Core Creed lines. Now, they're probably going to struggle... A little bit later in the stage of the game with the uh, Imperium, purely because, I mean, the Demon Hunters, they're quite strong in the late game with all their deep striking nonsense. You've got the impressive might of the Imperial Fists, who've got quite, quite strong late game as well. So the series right. might have to do a lot of, oh, as much economic damage as humanly possible in the beginning of the game and see if they can snipe out a quick victory here. Got the Tet Marines from every coming forward. Quite lethal beasts in the run, right, considering that they are builder units. And Waffle Summer 55 has gone for the Grey Knight path. So these guys are going to be quite capable of taking on Timonids in all tiers, really. Broodlord moving forward and slapping around the Pergator, or Pergator squads as the Broodlord on the left hand side, exactly the same to the Salamanders. Now we are, not, we are seeing some Thunderfire cannons from Kubini. Not sure how useful they're going to be, considering that you kind of want these, to keep these guys away from melee combat. And the Tyrannids have got plenty of opportunity to get people in melee combat. They've got the Lictors already on the go at the moment. Receiving. And it's not, 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 not an ideal situation for the Salamanders. Because the Spore Mine's been thrown in the middle of the Pergator squads, knocking them around, but these guys are quite beefy. Not going to fall foul like the Death Corps Krieg the other day. Brotherhood champion chasing around the Termagants. Morale's been broken. And they will not be able to replace them around until they've gone back home. Or they've got a sign-up creature near them. Definitely need to make sure that the Tyranids are supported by commander units and all that stuff. Plenty of lictors there. And they've got their Thunderfire Cannon opponents in their sights. Raising their mighty mandibles. Going in for a strike. And... They actually are, yeah, they're a little bit slow enough, so they are able to be slapped around by melee units, but kind of, kind of, <laughs> not exactly getting involved as, as much as you'd like. Being a little bit confused by the pathing. There we go, one Lictor for one Thunderfire Cannon each. Very nice stuff. Broodlord maneuvering around the sides as the Grey Knights come forward and see what they can do. There's plenty of Termagants, but not nearly enough to contend with the sheer amount of Space Marines on the go. Siege Marines carrying around the heavy cover with them. And I don't think Little Uns are going to be winning the game here. We'll need to see some more Tyranids coming down for support. We've got some Spine Gaunts from Necrotechnica. Mine's been thrown down as well. Again, not, not doing an incredible amount of damage. There's at least knocking them around. Space Marines moving inside the Tyranid base. Using mighty flamers to bring down the masses the Perestment Broodlord from Necrotechnica sprinting on over, seeing what he can do there's just so many of them it's not it's not like the Tyrannus to be outnumbered in any situation it's not what they like down here we've got the Gene Stealers slapping around a, bro a brother hug champion the Salamanders have managed to survive with all three Thunderfire cannons intact but with are quickly replacing those Lictors as Kaiku and the just sheer amount of spore mines have been thrown down eventually. 
slowly but surely bringing on those Greynats. Greynats being the primary target for those explosives. Yeah, they're going to have to fall back just a little bit to better ground. Maybe they can use these defensive structures to their advantage. Jeansons trying to make their way through this Imperial Icon on the left-hand side. Yeah, no one's taking on that Broodlord. Not the Merman. And the Grey Knights are just been absolutely bullied. A constant fire. The spare space being squad is going to come over. And the Tyranids, they're pushing back far enough now. Now we'll go back and focus on other things. Tetmarine being chased around by the Lictors. Could quite like the little kickback for the fun the fire cannons have. Why haven't got their... Oh, what is it called? Recoil. They haven't got their recoil balancers on the go. Whatever you call whatever mechanism guns have to stop them from having so much kickback. Space moves have stabilised. I'm going to scare away this Broodlord, potentially. If it even more, to scare him away. To kill him good and proper. One space being thrown around there. Very unfortunate for him. Well, that's what you get for engaging a Broodlord in close combat. Imperial Fists have been bothered now. They are now getting the ire of the spore mines. And yeah, these guys are just on constant build. 55 blue, so quite expensive. But they're getting the job done. That's the main thing. Explosions everywhere. Sad time for them all. But we've got upgraded listing posts. And the center is more or less majority controlled by the Imperium here. Thunderfire Cannons making quick work of the Spore Chimneys. Kaiku swapping out his Lictus for some Warriors. We should be a lot better at taking on the Thunderfire Cannons. I mean, what have you gone for your Venom Cannons? Or Death Spitters? Either way, Thunderfire Cannons don't really take two cannons being shot by any kind of weapon, really. The Tyranid Warriors are still on the infantry. They can be taken down by Thunderfire Cannons quite quickly. Gene Stealer, no, sorry, not Gene Stealers. There's just one single Gene Stealer which has been killed. But the other various breeds of Tyranid making themselves known on the right flank. That's a good amount of Grey Knights. And if two squads was difficult for the Tyranids to take on, having three squads, that's even worse. We'll fall back over here round the Xenotype Brood Womb. Also got a fair few Reclamation Pulls. Not sure if Putting them out over here is wise, but I suppose one problem with the Tyranids on this map is that they don't have enough re room to really uh, expand. So kind of bottlenecks here. They've got to build outside of their main base, so definitely need to defend more of the map, which is not really what they want to do. But they're doing it quite aptly. Great Knights is being blasted around left, right, and centre. On the left side of the map, we are seeing a magma vent being brought forth. Thunderfire Cannons now being stabbed around by the Warriors. And also got some Biovors waltzing on forward. Oh, not. There we go. You don't want them on the front lines, Mr. Kaiku. It's not where they're happiest. Dunthorpe's now going to be having a field day. They'll take on these scouts. No problems whatsoever. And but double listening posts actually now going to be up for grabs for the Tyranids here. Got a mass of little ones now. Looking to see if they can get some extra points capped in the centre. And what is going on in the base at the moment? Are we seeing tier 2s for everyone? Uh, yeah, I've seen tier 2 for you and you and you. And the Tyranids, yeah, they're also. So everyone's teched up in an even manner. The Razorbacks coming forward. Grey Knights now turning their attention over to the slightly more vulnerable side of the Tyranids. Yeah, they've got bigger units, but... Smaller numbers. Still, the spore mines are coming. Spore mines all day long. Just ruining their day. Tyranids now managing to take on that Imperial Icon. And one single zone for floating away from the mighty defensive structures of the Imperial Fists. Eri just saying, right, this side of the map is mine. You're not allowed to come here. That's it. That's that's the right flank secured. Left flank looking quite healthy for the Imperial oh for the Imperial forces as well. Now we've got assault squads for the 
the salamanders and this magma vent is set on fire by a mass of scouts pushing the Tyranids all the way back to their base. Turnfrops though will come over and the Razorback won't be living for much longer. So at the moment it's a very even setup for both sides. Got a good mix of close combat and range combat on the left and side. Although I don't imagine that the Assault Marines will be wanting to take close combat for too long. Probably just using them to distract the Zernfrops. Or maybe just screen for these Pergator squads. Now getting their side cannons with a lot of damage to the infantry and heavy infantry of the Tyranids. Biovors going to be finding some artillery support. Yeah, I think much like the previous game that we saw yesterday, artillery would be very, very useful for the uh, um, Space Marine forces here. Stormhawk Interceptor. Got a, a remarkable amount of DPS killing infantry. And also commanders, apparently. So good for taking care of all these little ones and the warriors. But really nice constant fire from the Tyranids. We're now seeing the Imperial Fists slowly making their way over. Stormhawk Interceptor going back to base to repair. And the Razorbacks now coming out in force. But the Zernfrops are the answer to the Tyranids words of problems here. But kind of like an available situation at the moment. Moving right in the middle of everyone. And what, their maximum unit size is two. So they are... Unlike all the Apocalypse, you can't really wall them up as efficiently. Easier to get a squad wipe on those lads. Oh, lasses. Not sure what gender a zone for up is. Well, they don't seem to be going down, really. we just be ignoring everyone at the moment. There we go. One squad right there. Razorback bringing forth a squad of scouts to burn them to a crisp. Using their ability let them survive 1 HP for a little while. And the massive Tyranids that came down to say hello have, like, the ocean against a mighty cliff face have broken. Although the Imperial Force have lost both the listing purse over here. Magma event being rebuilt. So yeah, very good defence from the Space Marines. I have time. Going up against Vin Diesel here. But Vin Diesel being supported by family, left and right. We'll take him on. No problem whatsoever. Zone folks attempting to take on another Razor back, but... The scouts are having none of it. Using what they love best. Salamander loves his fire. Double Biovors. Taking care of the scouts there. Won't be able to push too far forward. At the moment, the Tyranids have now been given enough space to expand a little bit further out. But not on this side. Grey Knight's now going to turn their attention over to this side. But I don't know if they'll be able to do that, though. Considering that the Tyranids are still quite strong on the left. Whether they're just planning to do a counter-attack and hope that Salamanders can hold. Maybe that's the idea. Primaris er Eradicator Squad, as well as a Primaris Aggressor Squad, being brought forth in the Furnace. Very strong infantry squads, or heavy infantry squads, should I say it. I mean, that's a lot of Tyranids. That's a lot of high-value Tyranid squads as well. Kind of fixing the back lines with a Venom Cannon. Taking out that production building, so no Primaris for you. We're back in 8th edition now, boys and girls. Devastate Centurions. Moving around the flanks. Taking care of those warriors very swiftly, I must say. Vin Diesel seeks to take care of the Biovors as best he can. But dying in the well, about to die in the process. He yeah, just manages to bonk one Biovore on the head once before being taken care of. The predators coming out for Kubini now. Well, that's a lot of zone traps still alive. And they could focus fire at that Predator if they wanted to. They're now going to fall back, taking it nice and easy. More spore mines been sent in. 
and dark situation the Imperium here as the Tatooine has just got more and more space coming forth on the capillary tower for them further increasing their influence Inquisitor or Inquisitorial Predator and you come out with a flame I do yep you come out with a flame at good against bunched up infantry squads Ooh, beautiful blue as well beautiful blue Biovores, they've got their biomassive spore mines now, so great against vehicles. They don't do an amazing amount of damage, but it's more damage than would regular have or regularly have against the vehicle. We've got artillery. Now it's just two tanks. Seeing what they can take on. Zone Furps ignoring death for a little while. Getting a few extra licks on that predator. Grey Knights moving back to the left hand side as the Imperial Fists, that Land Raider Achilles Alpha. That's what I mean by the Imperial Fists having quite a strong late game. They've got a fair, fairly large amount of Land Raiders that they can go for. These Khan effects is repaired quite swiftly. Lovely um, colour scheme for the turning to practice. Well, I like it. Red and grey out to play. Lots of firepower, but little ones coming forth to pester these devastators. Land Raider Achilles Alpha taking a sweet time killing the kind effects. We'll have to fall back for some repairs as well. Don't want to lose that kind of you know special. I mean, how much money do you have at the moment? Oh, you've, you've got plenty of money, just not a lot of green to replace him. Oh, just a level of aggression coming out from these Tyranids. Not a moment of respite or peace, but either the left flank or the right flank. Space Marine is able to push back the Tyranids on the left hand side, but it seems to me that every time that the Tyranids push back on one side, they're able to gain ground on the other side. We are going to see a glaive coming out for the Imperial Fists at the moment, and that is probably the biggest, stonkiest cannon, or tank, should I say. I suppose it has a cannon, but. Definitely the biggest unit for the Imperial Fists. Tyranids will struggle at holding their own against him when he comes out. Tyranids are managing to take down the defensive features of the Imperial Fists. We've got Trigon Warren being built by Kaiku. The Grey Knights. Not we I mean, what, what, what are you going for, Grey Knights? We're not seeing... Much apart from Pergator squads coming up from you at the moment. Don't get me wrong, early game. Absolute beasts. Now, how much do you cost? What, 55 and 10? Actually, so not, not terribly expensive. Still remarkably durable for what they are. Oh, no, you've got... Ah, oh, right, okay, you've got Terminators. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's 70 blue and 40 green to reinforce. It's a lot more substantial. Also got Brother Captain Harvin Stern the front lines and Glastigan Darren Crow. I'll be honest my Grey Knight law is not really well not really fleshed out don't really follow their law all that much I'm as well eradicate as a family out and yeah those Terminators man can't mess with them now also got some Terminators as well Salamanders though they might be slower than their other Space Marine counterparts they bring the damage. Lots of fire from everyone now. Predators attempt to burn a Khan effects to a crisp. Khan effects don't mind being burned, to be fair. We'll need to swap out these flames with some multi melter guns. We want to do any damage to them. Spine guns really negating the damage output of the primaris er eradicators. We've been taken down. Now the Great Knights actually. Considering that the Khan effects is technically of demon armor, the Grey Knight should be remarkably good against the big units of the Tyranids. A Death Watch veteran, Magubini jumping straight in. But the mass Khan effects is keeping these guys on the bat lines. On the right hand side. Oh no, oh, we didn't even get to see the Glaive. The Glaive died. Well, I bigged it up, and then it died, so I'll, build, I'll rebuild it. Also going for Whirlwind Scorpius as well. The Imperial Fists 
Not doing all that well. I can see some people being teleported in. Who's coming out there? I assume Terminators. You have got... No, oh, Tech Marines. Just Tech Marines. <laughs> it's a bit of an epic introduction for them on the battlefield, but I don't think they're going to be doing all that much here. We'll need to see these guys coming in to support the Imperial Fist and they don't die, but I mean, they've got their own problems here. Even with all the big bad units. Yeah, that's just that's just a lot of card effects on the left and right hand side. So unlike the previous game where they've just got lots of little uns and a couple of big uns, now it is, it's just pure size. Size is the prize, swall is the goal. The card effects is don't like these Tech Marine Tech. Oh, is that why, why you spawned in like that? Because you've got Terminator armor. Maybe potentially. Glaive is about to come out, and this dude is going to have to put a lot of heavy lifting in order to turn the tide. One counter effects goes down. Only four left on this side. Well, that Glaive is looking to fire. A full pack cannon. A couple of last cannons on either side as well. Yeah, the crown effects have been sniped out one by one. So they will live to fight another day on this side. Too close there, too close. The Timnits have now, yeah, they're, they're continuing to expand across the map. Got hold of both Magma Vents as well. So they've got money out the wazoo. And Warriors supported by Biovars once again. On the left hand side. Last of the kind effects has been taken out. We have a kind effects chamber right outside the base there. And they're just going to be spammed. I mean, what kind of economy have you got at the moment? You've got 167, uh, 105, and 160. Yeah, you've, you've got not infinite money, but you've got the kind of money where you're able to spam things out and not worry too much about losing stuff. Whereas, how about the space means 118 and 85, 92 and 74, and 88 and 51? Still got plenty of money there. I mean, not as numerous as the Tyranids, but they've got the cash reserves to at least make a decent counter-attack. Kind of fix in the middle. Also got that critical location countdown for the team on top. Tyranids inside the Salamander base. Salamander's trying to defend the relic here. The sheer amount of counter effects is just insulting. We've got Rogel Dawn coming out. Maybe he and the Glaive show these Tyranids what for. I don't know how effective Rogel Dawn's going to be in this in this game, to be honest. It's quite slow. We should be able to go one on one with the counter effects. But there's only one of him. We only get one Rogel Dawn. As of course, we see uh, Vulcan come out as well. Best friends working together, maybe. Oh, no, never mind. He's, he's building up a commander here at Upgrade as... I assume he's... Are, are you squad caps? Mr. Eri? No, you're not. So I don't know why you're not coming out. Your idea this glaive. Stuck on something, can't quite escape. His kind effects being a real nuisance. He's actually, yep, yeah, the, the, he's been hive mind controlled. So he's now been turned against his comrades here. That's not what you want your relic unit to do. Remarkably strong ability. Very often you'll see a lot of relic units be immune to those kinds of turn cut abilities. But no, not, not for the Tyranids. Whatever you want, they'll take control for a little while. And Eri has said no been done in. So it looks like double victory for the Tyranids. Which is quite insane when you think about it. Considering that, I mean, Salamanders, Imperial Fist and um, uh, Demon Hunters, very, very strong factions. Same with the Death Guard crew yesterday, they're also considered one of the strongest factions in the game. But I suppose in a faction war setting, uh, if you've got a mass of Tyranids on one side of the battlefield, they're able to really just um, what is it? It's like a force multiplier, really. They're able to combine all their strengths into one, which is basically massing all the lads together, isn't it? So 
Going up against one in a 3v3 is relatively okay, but going up against three in a 3v3 is triple the difficulty. It's nice stuff. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching and sending the game in, boys. And if you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month gets you watch the game a week. And there's also a Discord, where Discord things happen. Links in the description, as always. I'm Mr. Slanchuk. Pleasure's always never chop. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.